Welcome to Bergen Stages Television, our entertainment magazine here at Bergen Community College. I'm Jim Bumgardner, your host. And today we have a very special episode because currently at Bergen Stages, we are producing one of the most, if not the most famous play in theater history called Hamlet by William Shakespeare. And what better way to talk about it than having two of the stars from the show, Christina Craig, Hi. who plays <laughs> Ophelia, and Dakota Labrusco, who plays Hamlet himself. Hello. Welcome to the show, guys. Hi. Thanks, thanks. For, thanks for coming today. Of course. I know you got a busy schedule with the uh, with the rehearsals and everything, mm -hmm. but uh, but it's great to talk about the show. So, before we get into Hamlet, let's talk a little bit about yourselves, <laughs> Christina. You're the newbie here. We've just met each other like a week ago. Yes. Um, so, where did you go to high school? What are, where where are you from? Uh, well, right now I live in River Edge, New Jersey. I went to Riverdale High School. I graduated oh, 2016. Good, good. Uh -huh. Um. This is only my second year in New Jersey, maybe third. I've lost track. Oh, where'd you come from before? I used to live in Chicago and before that, Houston. Oh, neat. Chicago and then Houston before that? Yes. Oh, wow. Why did you travel around so much? Uh, mostly my dad's job just oh, cool. relocated. Oh. Then he got a new one, just, you know. But um, at the end, it all brought me here, so. Where you need to be, the Garden State. <laughs> <laughs> and Dakota, where'd you go to high school? I went to Fairlawn High School. Mm -hmm. um, I have I recently graduated Bergen Community College, and I am going to Ramapo College. A right wonderful right success story. Yeah. Our Dakota mm. Yeah, yeah. So Dakota, um, let me talk about high school with you. Did you perform while you were in Fairlawn? Um, the first two years I was in high school, I was always interested, but I never um, made the step to get into theater. And then junior year, um, I took drama class like throughout high school and then junior year I auditioned and then I fell in love with it and just kept doing it from then. And what shows did you do? Um, there, was, there was a couple, like um, the director wrote a couple pieces that we put on, but uh, I did A Midsummer Night's Dream my senior year. Oh nice, so Shakespeare is not a stranger. <laughs> no. Which is, which is cool, that's cool. And um, wow, that's great. And you took classes in the school itself? They had acting? Yeah, they had, it was a, like an elective. Oh, awesome. Class. I mm -hmm. had no idea that they did that. Yeah. I, thought that was great. I thought it was all extracurricular and outside of classes, so you could take it during school. That's yeah. great. Christine, where did the acting bug bite you? When did you start performing? Well, I started um, theater when I was around 10. Mm -hmm. There was a community theater about a half hour away from my house, and they were doing Peter Pan. Are we in Houston now? Or are we in, in? Back in Houston. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, my mom found it online. She's like, you know, this is something you might really enjoy. And I think at the time I was like, Okay, I guess, but uh, <laughs> I tried out for it. I got one of the Lost Boys, and I've been hooked ever since. So that was your very first play you that ever did? That was my very first oh, show. how cool is that? What a great one. So you sing as well? Or? I do sing. Uh -huh. Musical theater is, uh, is where it's at for oh, me. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, that's good, good. And so, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, Houston's a great town for theater. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know. The Alley Theater, unfortunately, yeah. is underwater now uh, yep. from, from the hurricane, but uh, some great theater down there. Uh, mm -hmm. Edward Albee loved uh, love that theater, and he would ha have all his shows premiering there uh, later in life. So it's kind of cool there. What was your very first play? Well, in it can go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Six, actually, if yeah, if you want to even go way back, go way third back. grade, um, we did uh, uh, Titanic, and I don't, I would, was the captain. Uh, I don't remember what his name was, but um, and then sixth grade, I was in or seventh grade, I was in Mulan. Uh, wow, <laughs> and that that was. That was the very first thing that I ever did. Yeah. So you always knew you wanted to be an actor? Yeah, you, as a kid. Yeah, yeah. Was, and you just stayed away from it a little bit in high school, and then you said, no, I got to do Yeah, it was kind of, you know, I was transitioning into the whole education system. Uh -huh. was, sure. Good, good. Titanic? Yeah. Did you sink the ship and everything? <laughs> It was like this cardboard, like weird control room with like like me and someone else. We were like talking. It was, it was kind of weird, but. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and Peter Pan was your very first one, or did you do something like when you were in, in preschool or? Uh, when I was time? when I was younger, I did like very small like student films. Oh, but, nice. But oh, um, wow. the ten ten years old in Peter Pan, that was my first theater stage, stage production. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you um do you guys remember your first lines? 
that might still no. haunt me from third grade. Really? Order, order. I hereby declare that the Nebraska State Board of Education is now in session. It was some Arbor Day play uh. from third grade, and it's just those lines. It's like, I guess you worry about lines. Right, just, right. i got to remember these lines. I know better now than I did um, when I was in the play in third grade. But it's kind of funny how some of them oh, just I stick know. with you, and yeah. some of them you just drag to the recycle bin, and uh -huh. they're gone, and you can never get them back. And say, I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to read the play again. Cool. So now you are, uh, Dakota, you finished here. So yes. being a theater major, you were an acting major mm -hmm. at Bergen, uh, got your associate's degree. What does that mean? What do you do as a, uh, just some of our uh, uh, listeners might be interested in becoming a theater major. Sure. What does that mean? So, well, you got to get your gen studies all squared and then you're, um, I took theater classes. I took, um, we did theater production workshop um, where we put on an entire production. We, we bought, we uh, built the set, we hanged the lights, we directed all of the scenes, we did everything and put on a show by ourselves and we really got to see what it was like for a off-off-Broadway theater company to put on a show. Um, there's uh, auditioning classes for actors. Um, I did a movement class which I really learned a lot from because movement's always been like an area of, uh -huh. of where I've struggled with but I, I Definitely learned a lot. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Great. So, yeah, you get a little bit of everything. And you do stage makeup, too? Yes. Uh, stage yes, that makeup. Was, so, it was fun. And you said gen studies. Just do you, because you're my newbie here, so you know <laughs> what he means by gen studies? The yeah. gen ed courses, which yeah, the, are what? The general education courses that are kind of like required by the school. There's usually a science and a math, a history, a social Writing, studies. Writing, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, biology, as yeah. we're <laughs> talking about today. Um, yeah, so there's all these gen studies uh, that you get as well as your, mm -hmm. or your theater. Are you a theater major? Are you planning on majoring in theater? Not currently. I'm still in a place where uh, I'm Not currently. Of... Just give me a few minutes. I'll get you on board here. I'm currently we'll in a place where I'm it. still kind of figuring out where I want to go, but... Uh, <laughs> No matter what, theater will always have a oh, cool. big place cool. in my life. And again, uh, it's, it's your associate's degree with your gen ed, so no matter what you took, the fact is, is it will transfer to whatever college you want to go to, and that's mm -hmm. the beauty of getting your associate's degree. Because you're in a great position, because now you're at Ramapo, yes. and having finished uh, uh, your, 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 all your gen ed stuff here, we were just talking earlier mm -hmm. that you're taking all theater classes. Nothing but theater classes. Which could be for, for two years. It's just and I having love it. fun doing that. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. And then... We had the pleasure of having you, your last year here, performing over at Ramapo yes. um, before you matric matriculated into mm -hmm. there. And you did two great shows there that I saw, and I know you did some student films. What were, what were the shows? Well, I, the first, when I was still at, um, at Bergen, I did uh, Macbeth at Ramapo. And then um, there was a, like a one-act uh, directing class that performed, and it was a... Interesting enough, it was a Godfather adaptation of Hamlet. Oh. Huh. Uh, so I did that, and then the following year I was uh, Lenny and of Mice and Men. Right, great, great, two great productions. I yeah, felt fortunate to see both of them. Mm -hmm. They were and they were, they were great experience. So awesome. And so, do you, Christina, have any idea what you want to do when you're done with here, or or what other than gen ed courses? What other things you want to explore at Bergen? I'm doing a plug for Bergen Community. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, uh, right now. Um, I don't know. I've been trying to get involved with some of the other clubs here. I've been um, going to the torch meetings, so maybe a little journalism aspect. Nice, nice. I do know that um, the only thing I know for sure is that after Bergen, I will be transferring to some other university. Where okay. I'm going at, I still don't know. I and have time to figure it out. We have time. We can talk <laughs> about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, good, good. So, uh, and you travel so much. Do mm -hmm. you see staying in Jersey, or do you think uh, you have no idea? It could be California. It could be well, California. I think... Um, I think I almost have like the travel bug. I kind of just like want to go more places, you know? I've mm -hmm. been in Houston, I've been in Chicago, now I'm here. So maybe my next college will take me uh, somewhere I haven't been before. Or study abroad, take a, a semester or a year to, to study somewhere mm -hmm. else, which is great. Um, uh, I think it's a great opportunity. I'm a, a, a child of study abroad, mm -hmm. so I love it. I just say go if it's a month or if it's a semester or if it's a year, it's a great, great opportunity because traveling is fun. Such <laughs> It's such a, uh, uh, you learn so much you from do. that experience you that you cannot sit in a classroom and learn, so it's kind of cool there. And now we're in the midst of, of doing a Shakespeare play. Yes, we are. Yes, uh, playing Hamlet and Ophelia. Um, how's it going? <gasps> Good. <laughs> You're looking at me. Like... It's early on in the rehearsal well. process. Yes, yes. Um, so I think just talking rehearsal process, what, 
where are we now? Uh, we're early on, you had the auditions. How did the auditions go? I guess kind of step by step, let's kind of walk through the audition process. Mary Clifford is directing mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. So what did you do at the audition? Um, it, was a, it was a very sort of, once you're partnered up with your scene partner, she kind of worked with you a little bit, sort of laid out what was going on. And then um, the two of us just sort of worked out what we were doing in the scene from there. The thing with like Hamlet and Shakespeare is that it's a lot to sort of take in and digest. So what I liked about the audition here is that it was more of like a, it was, it was more of like a working progress. It wasn't like you came in and like, here's your performance, then you leave. Everyone just sort of collaborated and then you gave your best audition mm -hmm. and then. And you got a chance to do it again yeah. and again mm -hmm. so yeah. that you could experiment with, with them. Yeah, just getting the words out at an audition must yeah. be a challenge enough. The thought that you're going to put a character behind it and emphasis and emotion is like, I'm just learning what I'm saying. <laughs> but you have time, which is different. You don't have to do a monologue uh, right. to, to come to the auditions. A lot of people make you prepare a song and a monologue, mm -hmm. if it were a musical or a monologue, but this is a little, a little easier, right? Yeah, the, um, the sides were there for you and... Um... Sides. What's a side? So there, there, uh, <laughs> Mary, Mary had prepared um, excerpts from the script that she wanted um, either there's like one monologue or a scene between two characters that she would read through. And then even after you had finished reading the side, she would, you know, give you like, oh, would you try this? You have to keep in mind that, which like I, I really liked. And, um, I think with Shakespeare it is very important that like not everyone can grasp the language that easily, so it it helped me definitely to like have like a moment like to to be briefed and then reevaluate digest and what, yes, what was yeah. given to you. Oh, that's great! And did you prepare ahead of time? Had you read it, watched it, any read over any of this stuff before you got to the audition, or did you feel like there wasn't a need to do that, Christine? Well, uh, I actually did. I read the. Uh, I read the script, and then I also read the No Fear Shakespeare mm. version, Which where it kind of breaks it down for yeah. you. It, it, it does what? It like breaks it down for you. It takes you know the Shakespearean language and translates it into. So you get what you're saying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> to try to guess. I don't know what he means here because some of these words have double, triple on top. You're just mm -hmm. like, right. I don't know what the meaning of this word is. So good for you. Uh, um, and, and I know you did because you would. <laughs> yeah, that's I. Uh, this entire time that I've been learning my lines, I'm sitting there with my phone looking through like, the oh, what does this mean? Oh, okay, and then I'm writing it down next to it. Just to and there's a copy of the No Fear Around so, mm -hmm. that you can, uh, so that you can keep checking into it. Cool, cool. Um, is the language, do you find it beginning to become second nature? Or do you think it's, uh, especially once you've blocked it and all that kind of stuff, do you feel it's... The, the concept of the language, like I, I, I'm... I'm able to understand basically what is being said, what like the, the, the narrative is and everything. It's just there's the conjunctions and like the small words right, that right, like right, change right, out right. all the meaning. It's like it's at times frustrating because like but or this like changes the entire meaning of a sentence. Yeah, and it's just, yeah, yeah. And that's the learning process. And the right. language is so important. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break and we're going to come back and talk more about this whole where we go from here with this show and, and into performance. So uh, we're going to take a break now and we'll come right back. So, so join us. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Let's switch to Energy Star light bulbs and stop burning through cash. Saving energy saves you money. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Visit us at stoptextstoprex.org. Hello and welcome back to Bergen Stages Television. I'm Jim Baumgartner, your host, and today we've been talking with two of the stars from our upcoming production of Hamlet, Dakota Labrusco and Christina Craig. Uh, guys, we were talking about language and how... In Incredible it is to be able to even speak this language. Um, the rhymes, does that get in your way or does that kind of help the rhyming couplets and things like that? Or do you have any issue with it at all? Or have you 
Am I now planting a seed? <laughs> to well, I didn't think about the rhymes. I think um, that's something I haven't really thought of. Oh, okay, honestly. cool, cool. Like, um, when you really look at it, I think that's not whatever trips me up. I don't mm -hmm. know about you, but... Uh, well, when I, like, in high school, when I had to, like, learn Shakespeare, I was, like, really into hip-hop, and I was able to kind of analyze, like, do it like that with, like, the couplets and, like, oh, four cool. pieces. Right, and right, then, right, right. Yeah, yeah kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a little easier to memorize because of that, uh -huh. and um, it's, it's not that difficult. Uh -huh. Okay, cool, yeah. cool. So now you're in, we were talking about this, this process, so we got through the auditions, you uh, got cast in the show, uh, then you started uh, rehearsals, and the first rehearsals are blocking rehearsals. Mm -hmm. What does blocking mean? What do we mean by blocking for our non-theater people? What does that mean? <laughs> well, blocking is basically um, where you're going to be on the stage when you say your lines. That's it, in That's a nutshell. It. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And in this instance, oh, yeah. it's a little more complicated <laughs> because of why. Why am I? What's what's interesting about doing this production? It is in the round. In the round. Mm -hmm. What does in the round mean? It means that the audience is all around the actors, and the players are on stage in the center. Yes, mm -hmm. they are. cool, cool. And you have either of you ever done in the round before? Have you had that? No. Uh, a couple of performances in high school. Uh -huh. Okay. But that's. A long time ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> but do, how does it feel doing it? How, what's, is there an advantage, disadvantage? Do you feel? Well, I think at first um, it's a little confusing because you're so used to facing your body a certain way to really, you know, face and interact with one side of the mm -hmm, audience. Mm -hmm. But now that the audience is all around you, you have to make sure that at some point you're giving your performance to each side. And I think at first it's a little confusing, but now I really like it because everything feels more natural that way. Oh, cool. Liberating. You're not conscious of that. Right. Uh -huh. For me, like the own, the, the, the biggest issue that I have is writing the blocking in my script because like <laughs> I have to, we're, <laughs> the easiest way for, for at least me to analyze it is like, like a clock. So like I have to like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, oh, is that 8.30? I don't or is that 11 o'clock? And like, and I write it in my script. But um, it's also liberating in a sense that I, I'm so used to like, Never do a closed turn. You always want to turn towards mm -hmm. the audience, but at this point, they're everywhere. I can exactly. turn any way that you I want. Face yeah. directly <laughs> towards somebody as opposed to cheating out, mm -hmm. because these people are going to see right. you on either side like that, which is exactly. kind of liberating, kind mm -hmm. of an interesting thing. And I can't wait till you have an audience to play that in front of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, to get them all, all the way around. It's interesting. I just saw a show yesterday that was thrust, mm -hmm. and but it was staged to be proscenium. So the act, I was sitting on one, one part of the thrust, uh, which was kind of on the stage. And the actors were faced out, so all I did was see a profile of them the entire time. They never played us, and right. I thought that would wow. Did they last minute think about putting those chairs on stage? <laughs> uh, and we just so so it's kind of they weren't liberated to mm. say, wait, I don't have to face this way. They they really faced out. Mm -hmm. um, but this is kind of fun, and writing down the blocking must be a challenge. Upstage, downstage mm -hmm. is like well, but there's all yeah, upstage, yeah, yeah, right, all downstage. Right, yeah. um, so the clock seems like the the best way, especially yeah. making an entrance or where you're coming in mm -hmm. to stand and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Oh, that's cool, cool. Mm -hmm. And I think our audience is going to enjoy that. We have not done round here. I think we did it about 10 or 12 years ago, we did The Tempest oh. Oh. in the round, uh, which uh, w worked really well. But so it's been a while since we've configured that black box theater in the round. And Tom O'Neill is doing the set. Um, I don't you've seen the uh, the model of the set, yes. which yeah. is kind of cool it's with really these cool. column entrances mm -hmm. and, and uh, cool tapestries yep. and things like that, which are gonna be kind of fun there. Uh, and then uh, Miru Kim <laughs> is doing our light design. I don't know if you've worked with Miru before, uh, but so. she she's terrific and, and just kind of with candles and all all this kind oh, of wow. stuff that you're using that the eerie graveyard scenes mm -hmm. i think we're going to get some 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 cool effects with cool. with our, our lighting that gets me into our costume designer <laughs> our wonderful marina tolly and anything about your costume you've been trying some stuff on i guess at this point mm -hmm. i've tried on at least four different costumes <laughs> <laughs> and how are they they're all gorgeous oh, good. um what she's really good at is that she's matching the costumes kind of like how the character's story goes so as ophelia's storyline progresses, mm -hmm. her costumes change to kind of like reflect that, which is a cool little detail. And I think Dakota, your uh, Hamlet does as well. Yeah, I'm in a lot of black. Uh-huh, <laughs> uh-huh, especially in the beginning, yes. through the morning of, of, of your father, uh, yep. and then as it goes along, there's transition there. Mm -hmm. Cool, um, oh, that's interesting. And, and, and yeah, I think that's what's great that Marie looks at the characters mm -hmm. and thinks about, think right. that through line with you to, to say, well, what, 
what works well for your characters. Mm -hmm. How fun is that? And you have rehearsal costumes that you work in? Yes. Yes, and rehearsal pieces. It, does that help? Do you find to have? I think I think it does. Shoes and, and the shoes for sure, because you know. I like the um, I guess robe. I don't know really <laughs> what to call it, but like it it does give, it brings you to that period, uh -huh. and, and it's it's easier to act in. And that's great talking about period because some people are so used to seeing Shakespeare, updated. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. And what are we doing with this one? Anything? This one is. This one is not updated. By the book, by the book. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. right how it's supposed set, to be. Set, I think, 1430s, 1460s, something like that, right. uh, about the time when uh, Hamlet would have been in Denmark mm. uh, at the time, which is great. Great medieval, pre, just pre-Renaissance, mm. um, mm -hmm. but, but, uh, which is cool because the costumes right. are really interesting. Right. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. So, so we kind of got into talking a little bit about characters. So let's talk about the characters just a little bit. What, what, tell me about Ophelia. What have you learned about her yet? I mean, I know you got lots to learn right. in the next uh, <laughs> uh, a few weeks to, to get the show open, but what have you learned about her? Well, right now, um, Ophelia is very young. She's a kind of naive. Um, she really looks to other figures in her life for direction, like her father, her brother, um, the queen. She kind of looks to them for their guidance, and she just sort of goes along with what they say because she believes they're right. Um, when you really look at it, Ophelia is like, one of the true innocent victims in the entire show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, she loves Hamlet, or she thinks she does. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I don't want to... Sp nope. I mean... <laughs> no spoilers here, but uh, yeah, I mean, it takes a path. <laughs> yeah. But as the story progresses, um, she kind of learns the harsh truths of the world. It sort of breaks her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is a great journey to take this right. character on, to, to start at that point and not play the end. It's like, no, i got to play this wonderful, mm -hmm. innocent, mm -hmm. naive person, and you can't bring what's going to happen later in the play to that beginning, right? right? You've just right. got to keep that uh, going there. And how, tell us about Hamlet. Hamlet is a very disturbed individual. Um, he's dealt with trauma, and he's just trying to make, his way through all of this darkness that he's been brought into and it gradually takes a, a, a toll on him that you know leads to some madness um, and he he has good intentions for the most part um, he try I, I feel that he's um, he tries to shelter um, the people he cares about from him to so this way they don't get caught up into all of it but um, it's just been a very interesting experience getting into the, the, the character. To learn this guy. How old is he? Uh, it's, it's, it's like young. his 20s. Yeah, I think he's young. Teens, I mean, he's just teens, kind of like a, yeah. yeah. I thought 18 to 20, teenager. somewhere. Yeah. 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 Have you even thought about, and this gets really Stanislavski on you, uh -huh. um, before his father died, what kind of guy was he? No, I haven't. Yeah, I just I but that, that, it, it, just it to think about the relationship. Yeah, right. What kind of guy was he walking around that kingdom mm -hmm. with dad still there mm -hmm. uh, in the picture compared to, because we pick up right after right. the death mm -hmm. of his father, and 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 being haunted by that death, uh, literally <laughs> by a ghost uh, of the father, um, telling you. And so revenge is important to him, mm -hmm. and and that's a. It's a hard thing to explore, and it's like on your mind, twenty four seven. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what's your what's your relationship with Ophelia now that I got the two of you here? What do you? <laughs> so what I've I've been working with is um, that Hamlet really does love Ophelia, that he he cares deeply about her, and that she's like this innocent figure, that he, but he he almost feels that he doesn't deserve to ha to have happiness at this point, mm -hmm. and that he wants to shelter her from him and keep her away and by doing so negatively affects her in the end. Right. She doesn't understand your intentions and right. takes it mm -hmm. takes it kind of a right kind of go right. Right. Oh, is that what he meant? Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I think there's a love. I find uh, and to protect her, he doesn't make that clear because right. mm -hmm. um, it seems angry and mean and she doesn't understand it because she loves him. Yeah, she and, does. She does love him. And that's part of that reality you were talking about that right. suddenly she was, the realities of the world suddenly hit her. Right. And go, well, I don't, you know, that's not the way I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Especially because in the beginning he makes it so known that he does love her. He sends her letters. He talks to her all the time. Mm -hmm. And then when Hamlet starts taking his path down to madness, he starts pushing her away and she doesn't understand. Mm-hmm. 
and the madness is in, is a real thing for him, uh, mm -hmm. disturbed by everything that's gone on in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So what's what are you finding the most challenging parts of doing these roles at this point? <laughs> and maybe I'm early in the rehearsal process to to, to have an answer. No, I, I for me. Um, because of how uh, dense the monologues are and how um, complex Shakespeare writes, finding the beats and the transitions in each part and each moment and having to make that physical and emotional connection to the piece mm -hmm. is challenging. Um, I'm working on it. It's, it's getting there, but it's, it's, it's definitely a challenge. I'll bet, I'll bet. <laughs> and by beats, just which direction is he thinking about? Right. What's going on in his mind at that moment? Right. They're just kind right. of yes. translating that for, right. for, yes. for our audience, just to um, find each of those moments. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and that's always been a question. What's the difference between a monologue and a soliloquy? <laughs> because there are times yeah. that he's talking yeah. the most, while, or she's talking the most, while somebody's in the m room, uh -huh. but sometimes nobody's There's, in the room, right. so he's talking to himself. the gods. Yeah. You know, right. Somebody help me, somebody intervene, somebody, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's just kind of an interesting Shakespeare wrote in both monologues mm -hmm. and soliloquies mm -hmm. to, to kind of let you know you and the audience are participating in this. You've right. got to you know, get up and say, hey, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but we don't. But, but there's hmm. somehow you were looking for the answer from right. somebody and it might not be directly from a person in the room. So it's like, gods, can you give me the answer? Just show me a sign, you know, a flash of lightning right, you know, or right. a shooting star or something. <laughs> we, we do that um, when we have our own little soliloquies. Yeah. And I think there's times in this play that, that you do that as well. Absolutely. Good. So now we'll get through the blocking period mm -hmm. and then we'll start some tech rehearsals. Mm -hmm. But I think you're learning a lot because being in the round, there's not going to be a ton of scenery you have to worry right, about. Yeah. I think there's right. some chairs and things that are going to mm -hmm. move around uh, into different locations along the way there. Uh, and then you add uh, the dress rehearsals and, 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 and all those kind of things. So what are you looking forward to doing in the next few weeks before we open, up to opening night? What are you... Well, when the, uh, when the lighting and the costumes and everything really starts coming together, that's when um, you start connecting more. Like, the more you do it, there's already a connection. But once you see like visually see everything coming together, suddenly, you know, it's all so real it's and you can real. really feel yourself in that part and in that moment. And I think you're talking about the collaboration of everybody and mm -hmm. this that collaboration yeah. of all the designers, right. all the people right. in charge. They're all working in their own little areas mm -hmm. and it's going on. I know uh, Dean Matson, who is our sound designer, has got some awesome fanfares mm. and, and uh, music that, yeah. that's going to be used throughout the, the production. You haven't heard that yet. I'm going, oh, wait till you hear it. So I think that's part of it when you hear it going, oh, I love that fanfare. It's long enough for me to cross the room mm -hmm. kind of thing and all that sort of stuff there. So I think that's the exciting part mm. uh, of the show. Um, and then we open. Then we, then we go open. We, uh, we open on October 27th, mm -hmm. uh, and we run seven performances. So it'll be a, a Saturday and two shows on, uh, sorry, Friday night, two shows on Saturday, two and 7.30. And then the following weekend, Thursday, Friday, and two shows on Saturday. And we close on uh, November 4th. Mm. Um, and, and it's a small theater. We only seat about 96 in the round, maybe 100, uh, depending if I can squeeze a few more chairs in there. <laughs> um, so I think it's going to sell out. I think it's being such a famous play, and not to scare you there, but I think that, that theater <laughs> is, is small enough that you know, it, right. people will flock to, to, to getting a, a seat there. So um, I guess I'm just kind of telling our audience to, to, to get reservations now. <laughs> Go to tickets.bergen.edu because it will, it will sell out. And, and it'll be fun to, to be playing in the round. And then, where do you want to do when you are done with this? What, you're going to go back to Ramapo, yes. uh, finish your your time there. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to do better in biology. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that no. bad. But but you'll go back to regular classes. Do you think you'll be doing anything else here this year? Have you looked that far ahead in the schedule? I've definitely looked at um, the other productions coming up, and I do want to audition. Good. Good. Um, good. good. I'm just going to continue. One day at a time. So it might be journalism. <laughs> and is anything up and coming at Ramapo? Um, I ha I'm in a uh, basic directing class where I have to direct a scene, so that's probably going to be like my next project that I'm working on. And I so regret that I still haven't had a chance to direct you. I do the musicals. You won't do a musical. One, one day, Jim. <laughs> one day we will get to work. <laughs> yeah. Had you in class, which was theater production workshop, yeah. which was uh, such an awesome experience. Yeah. But the fact is, is I didn't get the chance to 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 be the one to, to direct you. So someday we'll make that happen. I hope we have so. to if we have to open up our own theater. <laughs> um, that's what we'll do. Sure. So so thank you guys so much Absolutely. for being a part of the show. It goes by so doggone fast, and there's yeah. so much to talk about. But we have Hamlet opening up in the Interhall Lab Theater. It will open up on October 27th, and it will run for two weekends. So get your tickets. Tickets now. Thanks, Dakota. 
Christina, thanks. thanks for being a part of the show, and thank you for watching. Thank you.